Good morning and welcome to Wake Up With Marcy. It's time to be inspired, empowered, and learn to live our happiest lives. We continue our discussion of going back to school today. I wanna to ask you, did you know that there are 3 million disabled children returning to the classroom this school year? We hear how to articulate and help your disabled child ease back into school with Leah Whitman Moore, recipient of the prestigious Teacher of the Year Award and creator of the parenting blog, Loving You Big. We then discuss the continuing fight against COVID. We learn why testing and therapeutics are just as important as vaccines from Gerald Commissing, CEO of Toto's Medical. Lastly, we meet up with correspondent Vanessa Coppice, the owner of Bella Magazine. She shares the upcoming message for Bella Magazine. She will be highlighting fashion models with disabilities. Now let's meet our incredible guests. Hello, Leah. Welcome to Wake Up With Marcy. Hi, thank you for having me. I want to thank you coming on this month because we're discussing such important subjects about our children, you know, going through school last year and COVID and now entering into school again, what that looks like. And you yourself have three uh, special needs children and are helping others now to articulate what exactly it is that we need to tell our children what that looks like. And you're also an author. So I just want to thank you so much for coming on and helping parents out there to guide them. Absolutely. I'm in an unusual spot as both a parent and a teacher to be able to help. Yes, absolutely. So first of all, I'd like you to share a little bit about your book because it's so important that parents have a resource to turn to. Absolutely, yes. So the book is called Loving You Big. It comes out next month. And it is a memoir about what it felt like to learn that your firstborn child had a very rare diagnosis. Mm -hmm. um, it's called Krita Shah. And mm -hmm. I learned a lot about the implicit biases that I had gathered as a person living in the world and what it felt like to almost try to love a disability out of my child and how problematic that is. And despite all my training as a teacher, I'm now raising this beautiful child and trying to find her a space in the world. Um, and then I had twin boys uh, four years later and one of them we thought had leukemia and the other one we thought um, maybe needed brain surgery and mm. we just kept getting hit with all of these things that no parent should have to deal with. So I found writing as a way to cope with all of that. And it's been about seven years of, mm. of journey and the book comes out shortly. And I'm just thrilled to have a resource to help other parents to still access your self sense of humor, to still know what it looks like to be a family and just see what it feels like for another family who's been going through some difficult things. Absolutely. To know you're not alone and how someone else got through it is so very important. So thank you so much again, Leah. And as you've mentioned, you are also a teacher. And so you have been hit both sides of this mm -hmm. pandemic mm -hmm. and having to teach from home, having to teach other children. And now we are looking to get our kids into school full time. Um, and I would love to have you share with us how we can speak to our children, especially when they maybe have special needs or disability, have been at home, and now understanding what it is to go back into the classroom. Uh, yes, it is a very big transition, and I think the first thing is we have to be so explicit with our children or our students, wherever you're approaching this conversation from, uh, in a way that's accessible to them. So the guidelines look really different. School looked different for the last year and a half. So being very explicit about what it's going to look like. And one of the best resources I have found is called a social story, where you can actually take pictures of every step 
that a child will go through from the moment they wake up to the moment they're perhaps greeted by their first teacher. So it's something that there are apps for it. We make our own. Um, my daughter carries it with her like a little bookmark and you know, I'm gonna put on my pants, I'm gonna brush my teeth, the bus is gonna come. And it helps rebuild a schema that's been lost that kids mm. with special needs have natural regression and that's not just with their academic skills, but it's also the social emotional ones. It's also with transitions. And I think it's important to remind all stakeholders involved, whether you're the grandparent or a babysitter or a paraprofessional, that the transition will take a little while. So for some yeah. children, just walking into the building will be a success. And for other students, yeah. getting their pencil and paper out or opening their computer back up. So that's right. one of the strategies that I find really helpful. I mm. also recommend scripts and rehearsing. So my daughter, when she's very nervous, will interrupt the conversation and ask about your favorite Disney princess. That's her social cue that she needs a little help. So I want to be able to articulate that to her teacher next year, advocate for her. She's not just making conversation. It's a sign that she needs something. And then also with her, we're practicing other appropriate things to ask. For example, how was your summer? So really practicing the skills that will happen when she's out of our hands mm -hmm. will be things that might be useful for all children. Now, prior to going into school, will you be speaking with, I, obviously with your children, and that's so important that we do that, mm -hmm. but now talking with the teachers, the principals, those that are there in the school that are going to be with your children. And as you spoke about that social cue from your daughter, but really opening up the lines of communication with the school and your children. So can you help us to know, first of all, that you have every right to do that mm -hmm. and to never feel uncomfortable to, to reach out and like you've said, advocate for your children. So if you can help us a little bit about maybe broaching those conversations with the teachers, with the principals and, and making sure that everyone knows this is okay. Mm -hmm. So a lot of practical things come into place here. For example, you might not know who your child's teacher is until a week before school starts. So that's because on the teacher side of things, we're still organizing paperwork, we're still making classes. So what I encourage parents to do is to know what it is that they want to prioritize in their advocacy. And special needs parents know this from years of IEP meetings. We've learned how to say, here's what we need. Here's what the most important thing is. So it could be done with an email. It could be done with a phone call. And it's being done to say, here are some things that will help you in working with my child this year. It might not be able to mm -hmm. be given to the child, to the teacher, excuse me, until a day before school starts which I would remind parents, it's okay. We get really nervous, right? We get our school supplies packed and we don't know where our kid's gonna be. But the, the school on the teacher side, we are prepping. We are working on those social emotional transitions. We know that our children have been out of the classroom for a long time. So being ready on both sides. So when the doors do open, both sides are ready to communicate. And- yeah that the teachers know that those emails and communications might be coming and that parents can hear them without feeling like a nuisance or a bothersome parent, right? We need to right. give to our children sometimes when they don't have it themselves. Right, and, and you spoke to the fact that most, not I mean, the, the majority, I suppose, who you're speaking to have been going through this, but there's a lot of people out there their children maybe have just started with an IEP or maybe they're going through the process or need to, or just their child is just being diagnosed mm -hmm. with a disability or a learning disorder. So these are ways for them to see you've done it. This is how it's been done. And to know that you can advocate for your children and that there is help out there. So I want to thank you so much for coming on the show and how can others reach you if they have more questions 
or maybe a great website to go to? Yeah, so absolutely. I encourage, I always say, if you write to me, I'll always write back. And if I don't know the answer, I will get you in the hands of someone that does. So those new parents that you're speaking of, new diagnoses, or just a neurotypical kid who's really having a hard time transitioning, please reach mm -hmm. out. I can be reached at loving you big. Everything is loving you big. My, yeah. my social media, my website. Um, and that's, that's where I can be if anyone needs anything. That's wonderful, Leah. Thank you again so much. I wish you so much luck in this new school year that we are about to jump into. <laughs> thank, so thank you. you. So much. Take care. Bye-bye, bye bye. Leah. Next up, we meet Gerald Kamissing, the CEO of Totos Medical. Hello, Gerald. Welcome to Wake Up With Marcy. Hey, thank you for having me. So here we are. We're still talking about COVID. Well, you know, <laughs> COVID, uh, COVID's a pretty uh, good partner here in terms of uh, its ability to stay around. I know. So let's talk about this. So, you know, we have the vaccine. So many of us are out there. We've gotten the vaccine, but why are we seeing an increase in COVID? Well, it's, you know, it's multi-layered. The first thing is that the current strain is just a lot more transmissible than what we've seen before. Um, the second thing, of course, is that, you know, there's still a lot of people that, you know, aren't vaccinated. Um, and then the third thing, I think, is that of the people that are vaccinated, um, you know, based on some of the data coming out of Israel, you know, some of these vaccines don't last forever. And mm -hmm. so they start to lose some of their effectiveness. Um, and so, you know, we need to start monitoring that and seeing, you know, when things start to lose their effectiveness and what we can do about it. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, this is all new for us. So, so let's talk about those that are getting the COVID vaccine. Um, and then also those that aren't getting the COVID vaccine and, and other ways that they can take care of themselves. Yeah, well, look, the, obviously, you know, getting the vaccine is, is uh, very important to give yourself some base immunity, uh, mm -hmm. you know, give yourself a fighting chance uh, against COVID. Um, the challenge, of course, is that no vaccine is perfect. And, yeah. you know, a lot of people uh, don't know, you know, whether they're immunocompromised or if they've got some immune system problem until, you know, something happens. And that, that something right now is COVID. Um, so, you know, the, the whole concept that, um, you know, I'm healthy, uh, is, is you only find out you're not healthy once something happens. And that's, that's what we're running into. I think with a lot of people who think they're going to overcome COVID, you know, it's not, it's not quite that simple. And then, right. you know, with the people that are, are unvaccinated, you know, I think there's got to be a big uh, messaging campaign because, you know, there's two sides to that story. There's obviously, you know, the pro-maskers and the anti-maskers and there's the pro-vaxxers and the anti-vaxxers. Um, and, you know, a lot of people are just caught in the middle and don't really know what to, uh, what to think. Um, and they think waiting, you know, is somehow going to solve that problem. And I think with Delta, you know, that does add a little bit of fuel to the fire that, you know, maybe you can't wait as, as much as you could before. Um, and that, that I think has got to be, you know, part of that, that messaging is, you know, you can wait, but you know, that risk is getting bigger every day because people aren't wearing masks. People aren't social yeah. distancing. People are going out. They're not staying home. You know, I saw the uh, NBA finals the other night with all those people out in Milwaukee, a lot of people, I didn't see any masks. So that's the thing. Those that have not been vaccinated are still, they're not wearing their masks. So it's so interesting. We've really gotten lax about it uh, because it does feel good to be normal, but we aren't there. So let's talk about Totos Med Medical, which is your business, your company, and how you are helping others and what you've had to do during this pandemic. 
Yeah, you know, it's interesting. We started out uh, and still obviously have a big footprint in cancer and Alzheimer's. But, you know, when COVID hit, uh, based on a lot of our immune system understanding, we, we quickly pivoted. Uh, we started out by helping other labs uh, get into COVID testing because there was a lot of supply shortages. And we've got some good relationships overseas. So we were able to build up some supply chains. Uh, to deliver the testing kits and the reagents and all that stuff. Um, and then while we were doing that, we also, um, you know, built out a uh, capability through a joint venture to look at some more innovative stuff. So we've been looking at uh, ways to diagnose COVID uh, differently, not just with the PCR mm -hmm. test, uh, mm -hmm. but with um, a protease test and just a little science. Uh, protease and specifically the three CL protease, the coronavirus needs it in order to replicate and to go and infect other cells. And so we started looking at this three CL protease, you know, as a diagnostic because a lot of people were getting positive by PCR, but they were fine or they're two or three weeks out and they're still testing positive. Um, and that's because, you know, there may be virus there, but it's not really active or replicating. So we felt that that was, you know, something important to look at. And as we were looking at that as a diagnostic tool, our partners actually have a therapy. Um, and so uh, we currently began funding that and we're in phase two clinical trials in Israel right now with a uh, 3CL protease inhibitor. Um, that is, uh, you know, very promising. And so we're excited about that. We're going to yeah. expand the trials there and hospitalized and not hospitalized and uh, hopefully bring this to the U.S. pretty soon. That is incredible. I love to hear that. So it's all moving in a positive direction. You're trying to get it here. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I mean, the challenge um, with Israel is, you know, they were so far ahead of everyone else. Things there kind of happen you know, months before they happen here. So, mm -hmm. you know, for a long time, just like here, you know, they thought COVID was done. And now all of a sudden they're getting hit with another wave. The vaccine isn't as effective as they thought. They're now talking about booster shots. They're trying to mix the vaccines, you know, because yeah. they're not sure which one is really working um, yeah. the way they want it to. So, you know, there's a lot, a lot going on. And uh, we think it's a great you know, opportunity to be over there because we see things first. I think it's incredible. So I'm telling you, there's going to be a lot of people out there that have more questions. So how can we find you and more information about this? So you can find me uh, on Twitter at G underscore commish, C-O-M-M-I-S-H. That's my Twitter handle. Uh, obviously you can find Todos Medical at at Todos Medical. And we have www.todosmedical.com, which is the company's website. So you can get a lot of information there. And uh, obviously we, uh, we've we been doing a lot. Um, so there's a lot of collateral out there in the uh, digital universe for you to be able to read up on Todos. Incredible. Well, thank you for all that you're doing. That's incredible what you're doing. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. All right, Gerald. Have a wonderful week and thank you for coming on Wake Up. Thanks, you too. Take care. Next up, we meet Wake Up's correspondent, Vanessa Coppice, the owner and CEO of Bella Magazine. Well, there's my beautiful correspondent, Vanessa. Welcome back to Wake Up with Marcy. Thank you so much for having me back, Marcy. How You look beautiful. You look like you've had a lot of fun in the sun. <laughs> uh, I have been enjoying the summer, thank you. Yeah. And I know you have a crazy busy week and it's been a busy, busy time and you're getting ready for fall. Hello. Yes. Oh my God. It is so, and it, it's unreal how fast, right? It, it, like yeah. the next issue comes. Um, but we're very excited. We have two very special people who are going to be joining us for another dual cover story. So I'm excited to share that with you today. Okay, I'm all ears. Please tell us your fall <laughs> so fashion our, cover series. Yeah. Fall fashion, uh, our fall fashion cover star is Taryn Madden. You know her from Orange is the New Black and she has um, 
two incredible movies coming out right uh, along the same time that the issue comes out. So it was perfect timing. I have to tell you that the more I've, I thought I knew about her before and now doing my research as we uh, got closer to doing this cover story. Um, she is a God-fearing woman, a believer, and I could not have felt more of a connect, connection with her. We've been texting, mm. so she I, she feels like my BFF and I'm super excited it. to work with her. So excited for that. And That's for awesome. October, we have a special edition coming out. Uh, as you know, uh, Bella is all about diversity, inclusion, and we are highlighting for Down Syndrome Awareness Month um, model mm. and Olympic gold medalist, uh, Chelsea Werner, who is going to be joining mm. us for our cover story. Uh, I have a niece with Down Syndrome, so it is very important for me, uh, for her to see uh, girls and women who look just like her uh, on the yeah. cover of Bella. So it's super exciting. I love that. I love that, Vanessa. That's beautiful. I just love the messages and how you just put it out there that, you know, you, we all, yeah, right. The message, we're just all the same. And just to be able to see each other, or if we're not the same, yeah. that, you know, there's people to relate to. Um, 100%. And I think that, you know, the, the really valuable lesson here is that these, uh, these girls, uh, also one of our inside features, Grace Strobel, who is also the first uh, Down syndrome model uh, for beauty skincare products. Um, what this shows us is that we have all different abilities, right? And um, some of us make it uh, in one way, others make it in a different way. And uh, there is so much abundance out there in the world uh, that's yeah. there for our taking. So it's our job, yours and mine, to bring these stories to light and forth. And mm -hmm. uh, that's what makes me so excited about this. So I can't wait for you to yeah. all learn more about it. I cannot wait. So I know you have some behind the scenes footage of the cover shoot. So let's take a look. Yeah, oh my God, okay, well now I know. Now I know the little secret. Hello, I had no idea. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Vanessa, that is so awesome. Thank How you. Was she was that day for you. Oh my God, seriously, Tannen is, um, should be everyone's BFFs. I wish like that could happen. Just someone who is so special, so powerful uh, and has an incredible story and looks amazing in all of the fashions that we uh, got for her. So hope you pick up your copy and read more. Yeah. And you know what? Just having this platform and Vanessa and the message that you're putting out there and just the adversity and accepting everyone and the difference and the beauty that we have to offer because at the core of everything, it's about acceptance and love. And I think it's beautiful what you're doing. So thanks, Vanessa. Thank you so much, Parsi. I know that you feel it in your core, this responsibility that we have to share these stories. So I, I see that. I know that our, your viewers see it also. And I can't wait to continue to showcase more special people like this. All right. Awesome. Have an amazing one and good luck with everything. Thank see you. you, next you month. Too. Thank you all for joining Wake Up With Marcy. If you guys have more questions about any of the guests on the show, please check out wakeupwithmarcy.com. I got to tell you, there was so much valuable information and we'll continue the conversation next weekend. But I wanted to let you know about September. I'm so excited about September. It's National Recovery Month and also National Self-Care Awareness Month. And we are going to have some incredible episodes talking about national recovery, how it affects you, how it affects your family, the help that's out there, the resources, self-care, what you should be doing for yourself. And I just wanted to let you know exactly what self-care National Recovery Month is. National Recovery Month is a national observance held every September to educate Americans that substance use treatment and mental health services can enable those with a mental and or substance abuse disorder. And they can learn to live a healthy, rewarding life. And that's what I wanna be able to give you guys, information on that, resources on that. We're gonna have some incredible doctors on the show. So guys, I hope you will join us in September. Please have an amazing week. Remember to be kind to yourself, kind to others. And if you want to find me anywhere on social media, 
It's Wake Up With Marcy. But now on Instagram, it's official Wake Up With Marcy underscore. All right, guys, have an amazing one. And I'll see you next Saturday. Wake Up With Marcy is sponsored by True Serenity Tea, which is a monthly subscription box that delivers award-winning loose leaf teas from around the globe to your doorsteps. Check out trueserenitytea.com to order your subscription box. Thank you.